All right, we are back with another installment of the 10 best modern fragrances that you can buy. We did a designer installment. If you missed it, you can check it out here. And there we talked about actually 11 fragrances instead of 10 that I believe are some of the best releases to be released in the past five years from the time I'm filming this video. That's 2018 to today, 2023. I had a very particular criteria that I used to evaluate each one of those fragrances and for them to be considered for the list. And we're doing the same thing here today with Niche. Now, I need to get this out of the way. This was a much tougher animal to tackle than the designer video because with the designer video, I was able to say with pretty much complete confidence that I had experienced a majority of the most interesting fragrances in the designer market over the past five years. Because we all know that most of what is coming out of the market these days is not made to be interesting. It's made to be mass appealing. It's made to be generic, familiar, and not really anything new. And because I'm applying the same criteria to this niche video, it makes it a lot harder because we're going for interesting fragrances. Just to reiterate the criteria, number one, if the fragrance is a flanker, then it does what a flanker should do in my opinion. It gives new life or new personality to the original DNA or identity of the original fragrance and possibly even gives it a new function. Number two, if it is a new DNA, it actually does offer something new to the space. It's not overtly riding a trend and therefore it's typically not very redundant to other fragrances in its space on the market. I'm adding a third criterion in here that I did not add in the previous video, it was implied, and that is the fragrance is readily available for purchase today. Now that was implied by the title of the video, but I just wanted to make it very clear. And the fourth criterion is a personal one, and that is the fragrance holds my interest, not just my attention. That could be very subjective. It's not really easily quantifiable by anyone outside of me. So a lot of niche fragrances automatically fall under these criteria by nature. That is the nature of niche. So how do I choose 10 or in this case, 11, 11 fragrances that were the best to come out in the past five years? Well, it's almost impossible. The only thing I can do is choose from my scope, from my experience. More niche fragrances come out each year than designer fragrances because there are more niche brands. There are much more smaller brands out there than there are larger brands. So there's a lot coming out every year. I don't get around to touching even a small percentage of everything. So you're only going to see a small crop because I'm just one person. I haven't figured out how to clone myself yet. More on that later. As I said in the last video, naturally, these are my picks right now. They could change as my tastes continue to evolve and also as I continue to experience more new fragrances. Let's dive right into it. First up, we have a couple honorable mentions and they're here for a particular reason. They don't meet all the criterion, but I could not leave them out. First one up is from Le Labo and it's called Tabak 28. The reason why this is not a part of the official list is because it is not readily available for purchase. It is a city exclusive. You can go to Miami and buy it at the Le Labo boutique there any time outside of the month of September, or maybe it's August and September. I don't know if they've changed it. Otherwise, you can buy it online any time during that small window that I mentioned. But for that reason, too hard to get and also extremely expensive, but a beautiful, authentically boozy tobacco scent. Very dry and smoky, very ashy, a little bit like pipe tobacco, a boozy rum, lots of spices, very warm, kind of sexy, but not for everyone. Anyway, honorable mention, that is Tabak 28 from Le Labo. And our final honorable mention is from Raja Parfum. The reason why it's here is because it is technically a flanker, but it does not really do what a flanker should do because what this is technically doing is replacing its predecessor. This is Oligarch. Now, also, this is not readily able to be purchased right now. I hear rumors that it's coming back, possibly under a new name, so that will change very uh, possibly later this year. But for now, you can't buy it. But I'm banking on the fact that you will be able to. However, this does not really do anything different from the original other than making it smoother. Beyond that, they kind of function in a similar way. I would wear them in very similar occasions. This is maybe a little bit less fresh, but beyond that, it's the same fragrance. And again, it was created to replace its predecessor, the Eau de Parfum. So can't really count it here because the flanker does have to add some kind of new personality or new function. I can't deny it's one of my absolute favorites in my collection, Oligarch. 
We'll see if it comes back. Let's get into the list proper, shall we? First up is from Caron, one of the oldest perfume houses from like 1904 or something. This is called Aimé Moi Comme Je Suis, means love me as I am. This is a pretty simple fragrance, but it's quite unique. This is tobacco, hazelnut, maybe some ginger, a little bit of grapefruit, some vetiver, tonka bean. So you mostly have this dry, nutty woodiness. Vetiver brings a slight bitter quality, but it's nicely balanced with a little bit of tonka bean. And I think even the hazelnut adds a touch of sweetness. There's a dry, cozy feeling here. It's very handsome. I would say it's pretty masculine, but it's cozy. It could be a serious scent, but it could be something that you just wear to be comforting to yourself or others. Pretty light profile, not gonna scream. Again, has a handsome, has a gentlemanly quality to it. So it's not super loud because gentlemen don't need to be noticed in that way. So I'm warning you, if you're looking for beast mode performance, it's not gonna be here. But this is a lovely fragrance from a fantastic house. And on the discounters, you can typically find it for under 100 bucks. So keep that in mind. Worth getting a sample if you can. I've been talking about it since I got it. Really surprised me. I'm Emoi, Comme Je Suis, from Carhon. Saying their name wrong yet again. Up next from Argos. Not technically their newest release, but I'd say the newest one that you can still buy because their newest one, I don't know what the status of it is. It's called Nemean Lion. I hope to try it someday. But before that, we had this one, which is a lovely scent, which I found incredibly unique. This is called Adonis Awakens. There's a wonderful story behind it using this beautiful piece of art by John Waterhouse. And this is a rose fragrance, but it's it's kind of like a warm, nutty rose, like a toasted, nutty, warm rose. There's a sweetness here. There's a richness, almost vanilla like quality. There's a toasty quality, something that is reminiscent of like maybe by the fireplace from Margiela or doesn't smell like that, but it has that quality to it. Elegant, luxurious. Also a little bit cozy, perfectly unisex, but some might find it a little feminine because it does lean a little heavy on rose, but it's well balanced and it's beautiful. It meets all the criteria. I haven't worn it a whole lot lately, but I plan to pull it out again because I kind of forgot how great it was. This is Adonis Awakens. You can always use the code FRESH10, save you some money on any purchase from Argos, including a sample set. Link down below. Here at number nine from the House of Gallagher Fragrances, you're going to find this fragrance in a different bottle than you're going to see now because they've upgraded their bottle design. But they sent this to me when it came out. I believe it was in 2020. This is called Perfecto. This is still to date one of my favorite fragrances from the house in terms of meeting this criteria, in terms of really standing out as something new. This is a tropical fruity fragrance with a bit of a marine like quality, but it does have some very provocative elements to it. Number one, Champaca. Champaca flower is a thick, heady floral more on the sweet tropical side of things we have melon in here there's a banana like smell that's pretty prevalent and it's juicy and it also has a lot of driftwood driftwood is bringing this slightly dark woodiness almost smoky in a way but very much in the background a touch of grapefruit i think to add a little bit of a zing like a slightly sour more citrusy zing and there's even obviously pear can you believe it? If you're looking for something different for the summertime, smells beautiful on a humid day or maybe even in the evening, unlike anything else, that is perfecto. Do check this one out. Link down below. Here at number eight, we have a flanker done right. The original was wonderful. It smells like nothing else really. This is Gris Charnel, the X straight flanker to the original EDP. Making it darker, possibly making it more masculine for those guys who are maybe a little squeamish about the original being too soft. This is fig. This is tea. This is iris. It's soft. It's kind of powdery. It's a little bit sweet and fruity, but there is also a beautiful kind of dry, dusty sandalwood. And the base is amped up even more warm, dusty, woody. It really comes out, brings a darkness to it. Therefore, I think it gives it a different function. I would wear the original more during the daytime, maybe even on a warmer day, I would save the X straight for more moderate days, maybe still in the summertime too, but mainly at night. One of the few examples of a great flanker that I love and can easily endorse. Gris Charnel, the X straight. Number seven, this is from Roger Parfum. This came out in 2020. This is called Burlington 1819. Now, this has been reported to be quite 
polarizing. When I first smelled it, I loved it. I couldn't understand how people could not like it. But to some people, the cumin in here really comes off very strongly smelling like sweat or BO. So be warned, everyone's skin is gonna be different. Everyone's experience will be different. Some people, the cumin's gonna really scream and take over and you might hate it. But some people like me, I get more of the citruses, more of the boozy quality, more of the other spices. It's kind of a sweet, damp smelling zingy grapefruit with some rum, with some herbs and spices, with some woods. There's something very playful about it, but also kind of elegant all at the same time. Perfect for, perfect for, we caught it. My life flashed before my eyes, but rest in peace to the cap. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> I think I've said my piece. I think it's done having me talk about it. That's why I tried to escape, but you'll never escape. I love you too much. Let's move on. At number six, a release from 2021, a beautiful fragrance that really puts Zahar off even more on the map when it came out and it still stands today as one of the most unique and special rose fragrances to have ever been on the market. And you know what it is? This is Signature Rosé. Wow. As I've made very clear without any shame or reservation, this is a rose fragrance that I can recommend to anyone that includes those who claim they don't like rose. I'm not saying I don't believe you, but I'm saying wait to really believe that until you try this. This is rose incense. There's a cooling smokiness, almost a little bit resinous from a lot of olibanum, mixing with several different varieties of rose, some of the highest quality expensive rose you can get and put into a fragrance, a little bit of oud and vanilla in there, make it an almost chocolatey, especially in the heat. Not really my first pick in the heat, but I've worn it in the heat and it worked and it's beautiful, performs very well, elegant, very unique, perfectly unisex. Check it out. Link down below to Zaharoff Signature Rosé. Now we're into the top five. This was love at first sniff. I felt fortunate that the brand sent this to me pretty much right after it came out and I did not ever expect to hear from this brand in my life. From Penhaligans, Halfetti Cedar. Oh man, I've been singing the praises of this fragrance for some time and those of you who've tried it, I think a lot of you guys really appreciate how unique, how elegant it is. Not everyone's going to love it because it is quite particular. This is very dry, peppery cedar wood, very dry woods. On top of that, a little bit of pruney dried fruits, not really juicy and bright, kind of darker dry fruitiness with some rum, maybe even with some peach in there. It's so thick. It's so rich. It is so luxurious. It smells upscaled. You smell wealthy wearing Alfetti Cedar. If you don't want to smell wealthy, don't get this fragrance. Get a sample. Again, a little bit polarizing, very particular, but it's on this list for a reason because it checks all the boxes. Halfetti Cedar from Penhaligans. Number four, I almost forgot about this fragrance because I forgot that it barely makes the mark time-wise. was released in 2018. One of my favorite fragrances in terms of vetiver from Amarud. This is Lunar Vetiver. I think I've turned a few of you guys on to this one and you see how special it is. I've seen some people compare this to Raja Parfum Vetiver. I can kind of see that, but honestly, this is more complex to me than that. So I need to be honest with you guys, from this last scene that you saw, for another nine or 10 minutes, my mic was not picking up any audio. So I have to do the last few fragrances. Again, we're gonna continue on with Lunar Vetiver, <laughs> which doesn't smell like Raja Parfum's Vetiver. Mm. This is a lovely fragrance. This is woody. This is very spicy, hot spicy with a lot of pimento pepper. I'm going to have a great attitude. We're going to finish this strongly. Has a little bit of a beautiful kind of creamy vanilla sweetness as it dries. Transforms quite a bit in a very unique way. And it's probably one of my favorites. Easily top three. Do get you a sample of Lunar Vetiver. Link down below. I'm happy. Up next is a complete phenomenon of a fragrance. I don't know if I expected it to become what it became when I first started talking about it back in 2020. I wasn't the first one to talk about it. 
but there definitely wasn't very many people talking about this when I started to rave about it. This is Ganymede from Marc Antoine Brachois. Now, believe it or not, some of you may know this, some of you may not. Look at this. There's a flanker coming, X straight. I'm a little bit skeptical because it's obvious what they're doing. They're using the success of the original to make more money. I get it. It's a business. That aside, I have all the faith that they are doing it smartly, that they are going to make a flanker that, in my opinion, does what a flanker should do. There's going to be a little bit of a different magic to it. It's hopefully not going to be redundant to the original because they will both be available as far as I know. So it would be nice to have some distinction between them. Also, this thing is extremely strong already, so I can't imagine it being stronger. But remember that concentration doesn't always refer to performance. That might sound weird. I've done a video all about that. If you want an explanation on what that means and how crazy that sounds, watch that video. Ganymede is smooth, metallic, minerally fresh suede leather. That's the best way I can describe it. A little bit of a strange touch in there from Immortel, which brings an almost culinary or curry-like vibe that doesn't always work with everyone. That seems to be the turning point for a lot of people, but if you can appreciate it, you're going to love the fragrance. It smells like nothing else out there. Completely unique for a fresh fragrance. That's Ganymede. If you haven't yet tried it by this point, I don't know what you're waiting on. Are you waiting for Ganymede to crash into Earth? Please try this fragrance before that happens. Okay, I'm already feeling a lot better. We don't have much left. Number two is Gentle Fluidity Silver from MFK. This is another unique fresh fragrance that I think is even more wearable than Ganymede. Maybe even more versatile, just as simple, I would say, but in a completely different way, quite a juxtaposition of elements that work beautifully together. We have a cooling, fresh, sharp juniper berry, which is used to make gin, if you didn't know that. So there's a gin-like freshness here mixed with a beautiful combination of musk and amber and vanilla and coriander, making it kind of warm and sweet and musky and ambery, mixing with that cooling freshness. Ultimately smells clean, but with depth, with kind of a warm depth. Easily wearable for any occasion, all year round. Performance is great, check it out. You might not absolutely love it, but you might absolutely love it because it smells like nothing else out there and it's so easily wearable. Checks all the boxes for me. Gentle Fluidity Silver from MFK. And what is our number one? This was a big one. I had to be really sure about this. And I am sure about this because this is one of those fragrances that every time I wear it, I never regret it. There's not an ounce of regret because there are those fragrances and I know you can relate. You spray it on and you immediately wish you had worn something else. Not that you don't like it, but it's not moving you. I know I'm not the only one. This fragrance never does that. I always am happy with my decision. I wore this last night and I absolutely loved it. From Amouage. 2020 release. A lot of people are claiming this to be their favorite from the house. I see why. This is Enclave. What a special fragrance. No other mint fragrance smells like this. Spicy, cooling, fresh mint. Mint and cardamom working together. That's the cooling part of it, but that is juxtaposed with warm. Some of my favorite fragrances do that, as you've seen with the MFK. This is juxtaposed with a warm, leathery, woody, ashy, smoky, ambery, labdanum, a resin, and there's more to it than that. But that is mostly what you get is this beautiful duality of hot and cool working together with mint at the forefront, but in a way that doesn't smell like toothpaste or gum. It smells like nothing else. So much depth here, very much homage, something you would expect from the house. So well done. Easily wearable, but I would call it maybe a little bit more formal wear because it's so special. But if you love it, you could wear this anywhere. Do get you a sample of Enclave if you have not. And don't smell it right up close when you spray it on your hand. Let it breathe. You know how it goes. Check it out. Okay, we made it here. Here we are, guys. I wanna know what you guys think of my picks. Have you tried any of these? Do you love them? Do you hate them? Remember what I said, there's a lot of fragrances that are not here. Keep that in mind as you get ready to type your comments. And please subscribe if you have not already. Peace, I'll see you in the next one.